Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about some smart tools we have developed to remove membranes from fiberglass reinforced plastic pressure vessels, commonly known as FRP vessels and, and most, uh, mostly used in water processing applications. For those that are interested in process membrane spiral wound removal, uh, please refer to our earlier video for use of spiral membranes in more common stainless steel vessels. Today we're solely talking about FRP vessels and the tools that we've developed to remove or to get into the housings and then safely remove membranes. We've modelled our, our toolkit on the Pentair code line vessel uh, and there are differences between the FRP vessels most commonly seen in this bell, hel bell housing area of the vessel. Different diameter bell and, and the bell potentially starting further back in some other makes and models of vessels. Right, let's demonstrate what we have in the kit. So each kit has uh, a series of six sectional push rods designed, remove, to, designed to remove up to seven membranes from a pressure vessel. Uh, the extra extraction, extraction rods have a end cap with an, a soft, empty uh, end piece to prevent any damage to the uh, interior of the pressure vessel. And to link it all together, we have a, a sectional push rod handle to allow for uh, movement of the push rods through the vessel to remove the membranes. We have a vessel clamp. Now the vessel clamp has a soft uh, rubber line in it. This vessel clamp is designed to sit on the exterior of the FRP vessel uh, to give us a, a, a device for allowing the compression tool to lever against to remove the end plate. I'll demonstrate that shortly. We have the compression tool itself with adjustable arms, an adjustable uh, center screw that allows us to compress the end cap to either remove the shim plate or compress the cap back into position. Again, we'll de demonstrate this shortly. We also have within the kit a jacking tool. Uh, this jacking tool is designed to jack off the end cap of the FRP housing once we've removed our, our shim plate or our shim uh, ring or spring. We'll demonstrate that shortly. And finally, we have a eight inch pig. Now the eight inch pig uh, block is designed to pig out very difficult to remove membranes uh, using uh, hydraulic force being water. Accompanying that is a rubber bun to um, put into the port of the uh, membrane vessel to prevent any water loss. Generally water is used uh, low pressure but high volume. Some of the unique differences in various FRP housings include the, uh, the end cap itself, how it's retained and the type of uh, fittings that are used to secure the, uh, the permeate outlet. We're now going to demonstrate the tools and how we would remove the end cap of a FRP vessel. In this case, we've used a code line. We've modeled our toolkit on Pentair code line vessels, and we'll show you how those are used now. So the first thing to, we do is we move our, our, our shim spring. We then fit our vessel clamp so we can compress uh, the end plate against when we come to when we come to install the end cap again. So this uh, end clamp or this vessel clamp sits in a defined position uh, against the vessel on the exterior of the vessel. Uh, it's nicely cushioned against the FRP housing with its soft soft rubber. Uh, insert that we demonstrated before. Now comes time to remove the end cap and we use our jacking tool for that purpose. The jacking tool 
pretty simple to use. We simply wind the thread of the tool into the end cap, do up our little, little nut, and we simply wind the nut to extract the end cap. You can feel, feel it, you can feel the end cap release from the vessel. We'll remove the end cap, and, and then there we have it. The uh, jacking tool can then be removed, and we are ready to extract our membranes. This is where we would use the sectional push rod device to extract the membranes from the vessel. keeping uh, adding sections as, as we need to. Okay, so now we're ready to reinstall our end cap. Take the end cap, you may want to apply a little bit of lube around the end cap seal. Fit it into place by hand. Just nice and square, doesn't have to be too tight. And then we get our compression tool to compress that into place. So we get our compression tool, adjustable arms, adjustable centerpiece. We position that over our compression retention clamp and we simply compress on the center core of the end cap nice and squarely and squeeze the end cap back in to position. You'll visibly see the end cap moving past its grooves see the retaining spring grooves appear when you know you're at that point it gets a little bit firmer you can remove the compression tool and now fit our retaining shim spring Ensuring that's nice and secure, that's that vessel done. We can now remove our, our compression uh, vessel clamp. And we can now move on to the next vessel, or if that's the last vessel, uh, reconnect our permeate hoses and get ready to pre-commission.